What's up guys, I'm Anthony Fan of All Games, and I'm back giving you another drama script this Saturday. And on this drama script this Saturday, I want to give you your thoughts on how do you think the elite is revolutionizing the indies, almost making it as you don't need um, WWE to to become a big hit in the in the wrestling industry. Because they're, they've been really doing their thing the past three years in the indies within ROH and New Japan Wrestling and um, PWG. They've, they've been, I would say, amongst at least top ten, especially Kenny, for, the, in my opinion, the past three years in the indies. And they've really, they've really taken off in the last year and a half. And it's like they really they really don't 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 need to to go to the WWE so how can their success in the indies number one help the indies promote the indie and and the independent organizations more and two how can it influence anyone else that may be conflicted oh do I want to follow my dream and go to the WWE or can I just stay within the indie, indies with you know because granted the indies does grant you more freedom it seems looking from the outside in it seems that you have more creative control i believe because with wwe it's there's like a lot of writers and like a lot of storylines that that most is mostly is controlled by WWE. It's not controlled by the two wrestlers, which I feel that in order to get a believable slash great storyline, I think it should be left in the hands of the wrestlers, not so much heavy on the writers as WWE does. It's like all the storylines are are mostly on the writers, where it seems in the indies everything is mostly on the wrestlers even when it comes down to to the finishes it seems like on WWE it's all what they want and when it's an indie it's all to what the wrestlers agree with <laughs> but they've been doing a lot of big things uh I think in the past two years the Young Bucks have became what I think eight time junior IWB Tag Team Champions, and now they have the Never Tag Team Champion, the Junior Never Tag Team Champions, and I think they still have the IWPG Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, and then um, the past three years, Kenny Omega has been the IWGP Intercontinental Champion, I do the IWGP, uh, the first ever IWGP uh, US Champion, and now he's finally, finally, uh, IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, and then same thing with when um when wow, I forgot his name, the villain, yeah, Marty Scroll. When he first started and coming on the elite and things, he was ROH TV Champion, and then he was uh, IWGP Cruiserweight Champion. So it's like. Everyone in Bullet Club or in the or that's in the Elite show is really doing big things. And then when Cody joined, it, it like skyrocketed them further. And then Cody became um, ROH World Heavyweight Champion. So it's it's I think the Elite is like paving the way, saying if you really don't want to go to WWE, you can get your you can get your name out there through through the Indies. Now I think they're they're that first stable or faction, however you want to put them, to, to do this. Yes, I know social media is helping them a lot to, to get them to get them out there. And plus they sell a lot of merchandise. Like it's getting to the point where I see more Bullet Club t shirts in arenas in WWE arenas than I see WWE shirts. And like WWE tries to hide it so well because that's not the Bullet Club is not them. That's not their shirt, so they're obviously gonna 
try to find people in the crowd that's wearing their shirts. They're gonna try to find, instead of showing, obviously instead of showing someone wearing a Bullet Club t-shirt, they're gonna try to find someone wearing an OGBC shirt. Cause you know, Baylor Club, and that's Finn Balor, but and it's indirectly the same thing cause uh, Finn Balor started Bullet Club back when he was in uh, New Japan Wrestling. But it's, it's just like, they're paving the way as like, hey, if you work hard enough and you're you're that good at entertaining the fans and they sell a shit ton of merchandise and look, they even funded their own event all in. And that's a really big thing. Like, like them taking a risk using their own money and them doing their own event. So is this is is depending on how good the first all in is is that going to turn into the the indie WrestleMania but you could say you could you could you could fight for that but we already have a uh, wrestling kingdom which I feel that's the indies WrestleMania is wrestling kingdom that's what I feel but if they do it how they have it like maybe 8 months apart because let's say they keep, let's say All In comes again and it's every September and then they use All In as a good build up because, oh, wow, it's right after, the, it's, oh my, it's right almost after the, the, the G1 Climax because we're in the middle of the G1 Climax right now. Then it ends and then it goes into All In and then All In, you could use All In's momentum to help build up the other ROH and New Japan Wrestling pay-per-views to help you carry over to get to Wrestling Kingdom, but that's, I'm, I'm probably just thinking too far ahead on that. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, shout outs to, to the Elite, the Bullet Club. They're doing big things. They're paving the way for indies. Hey, you don't, you don't have to go to uh, TNA. You don't have to go to WWE. If you're successful enough and entertaining enough, you could, you could stay within the indies. But yeah, that's that's my thoughts on this week's Drama Script of Saturday. Um, remember, you can catch Drama Script of Saturday every Saturday here on this channel. And until next Saturday, guys, I'm Game Fiend for Noah Games, and I'm out of here. Later, and peace.